What's up traders, Sandro O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is October 7th, 2021. Thank you so much for tuning in team. Today we're going to talk about the price action in the indices. We're going to go under the hood. We're going to go through a lot of high level stuff that a lot of traders are really not discussing. So we're going to go under the hood and really just take a look at what I'm seeing in the markets. Before we dive into all that, quick first disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan, your own risk parameters, last but certainly not least, do not yellow your entire account into any one of my trades. So first of all, we're also going to talk about the behavioral aspect of this price action and what it is doing to traders. I've been participating in a lot of Twitter spaces with other you know, investment professionals, and I've definitely been picking up on some vibes. So we're going to talk about what those are and really just how to win in this environment mentally. So let's let's dive in, team. All right. So box scores for today. Let me just do 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 slideshow from current slide. Boom. Box scores. Really nice day of price action compared to what we're used to. We finally busted out of this chop zone, team. S&P 500 is measured by the spy closed up 0.86 percent. NASDAQ QQQ finished up 0.92%, our big winner for the day, reasserting its dominance. The IWM small caps up 1.54% and the Dow Jones up 1.02%. So the IWM had been showing relative weakness for the past two days as the NASDAQ had its nice bounce higher. The small caps have been showing relative strength for five weeks while the NASDAQ has been on the mat. So to me, it made sense that, hey, you know, there's two days. NASDAQ's having its bounce, you know, IWM isn't really shining, but I had a feeling a lot of players would chase the shiny object and run right back to all those growth names. And I think that is exactly what happened. So the other really important thing that we're seeing here, the volatility of all these indices got crushed again. This is super important. Not many traders really look at the volatility market. But when we we're going to take a look at the spy, you'll see the VIX close below a key level and then market breadth. We had nice breadth across the board. We had 78% advancers in the spy. Best breadth was the Dow Jones with 87% advancers. Next was IWM with 81% advancers. So overall, I look at this and I go, wow, what a great day in the markets. Let's take a look. Finviz heat map. We have you know just a day of broad strength look at this great heat map great breath i think what's really confusing a lot of people out there and yeah you can't really blame them when you're watching price action all day it can really get you know, your mind can sort of like enter almost like a fog but we did not close on the highs today so i think a lot of investors and traders they're kind of having ptsd from the last five weeks and it's like Oh my gosh, we just went down 20 basis points. Like what's going on? Like that means the sellers are coming in. Like that means they're going to sell everything. And like, you know, we're going to go back to the lows and we're going to crash. And like, I really think that's the sentiment right now. Like, like I was saying, you know, I was on a, a panel with a bunch of speakers and basically like heading into these last two days, everyone was bearish. And I will say, even after today's action, I'm still noting a lot of bearish sentiment when in reality, you know, we broke out of this downward trend channel. That was great. We did that yesterday. We decisively are trading above the five day EMA now, which is also great. You know, it's a great first step in terms of flipping that trend. We made it inside of this monthly value area and we held inside of it today, which is great. And we actually triggered this 80% bullish rule for the S&P 500, the 80% bullish rule is basically if you can jump back inside this value area and stay in it for two candles. So basically you, know, you jump into it then you confirm it the following day, there's a high probability that you can test the other side of value. So that would be a move to about 4480. So I'm seeing all those indications and I'm like, that's pretty great. And then we close pretty much right on this 20 day simple moving average. Would have loved to see us close decisively above it, but I think that's okay. So it's like, you know, we're clearing key technical levels, you know, things are looking better. We didn't have the debt default. You know, so to me, overall, this is a more constructive picture, but everyone has that PTSD team. And basically what happened is we have the jobs report tomorrow. We have the NFP numbers coming out. They come out once every month. 
These are huge numbers, especially if you're on a fixed income desk. When I was on the trading desk at Vanguard, every month it would be like a big deal. Like, what are these numbers gonna come out as? And it would really impact the treasury market. So what I've noticed in the equities, pretty much every month, like clockwork, the day before the NFP, there's always profit taking in the market. So think about this, we just had, you know, a really tumultuous sequence in the market. We're finally getting some relief. But now all these fearful investors, they're going, oh my gosh, the NFP is tomorrow. And if it comes out good, the Fed's going to taper. Even though we all know, the Fed said clearly, guys, we are going to announce the taper in November. The only, if the jobs report comes out good, we're going to taper. If it comes out in line, we're going to taper. If it comes out meh, we're going to taper. The only way we would even consider not tapering is if it came out, you know, absolutely horrible. So this report comes out good. We already know what the Fed's going to do. If it comes out medium. We already know what they're going to do. So basically like this jobs report to me, in terms of the overall market, it's probably one of the least significant jobs reports because we all know what's going to happen. There's no like, uh, there's no secrets going into this report. Everything's been pretty transparent. So I actually like that we got this profit taking, you know, we'll see what happens into tomorrow. But yeah, overall, I think we had a pretty nice sequence today. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. Yeah, we had this really nice move. You know, we pretty much moved through the entire weekly value area in like a single day. So now it's like we're getting after a really nice move to the upside. Like think about it yesterday. Uh, let's pull this over. From the low of the day, we made a low of like 4270 ish. We made it all the way up to, yeah, 4425 or 4430. Yeah, 4420. It's a really nice advance in the span of about 24 hours. So, yeah, if you get, you know, we're heading into an economic data point, we just had that really nice advance. To me, I think it's okay that in a skittish market, you know, we get some profit taken. Uh, yeah, and then even on the hourly chart, you know, we were just really extended because we made that big move. Yeah, so now we're trading right around this weekly value very high. Like I said earlier, would not be surprised if we closed, um, you know, if we retested it. But pretty much my thinking was so long as we close above this weekly value very high, I think that's a big win for the markets. So... That is our S&P 500. And then linked to the S&P 500 is the VIX. And the VIX did something different today. We have been stuck in this elevated volatility regime for the past six trading days where we're getting like a plus 1% day, negative 1%, plus, negative, plus, negative. And it's been, you know, really taxing mentally for a lot of investors. Today, we got our first close below that range. So we got, we finally broke below 20 on the VIX. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. So yeah, to me, that's incrementally bullish. In terms of your mental state, I'm seeing these traders, I'm talking to them as well. And they're like, I can definitely feel it too in myself. So it's not even me just like saying about them, but uh, you know, these people, they're losing sight of like what's up from down. They're just maintaining a bearish bias. They're kind of like anchoring. They like, they like don't trust the rally, which to me, like when someone says like, I don't trust this action to me, it's like, what does that mean? Like point, point me to like a data point that you're talking about. If you're just saying like, you don't trust it. That's like, a, I don't even know what you're saying, but yeah, I think just as a whole, the trading like just the trading community like on twitter everywhere i think there's a lot of people that are just like i'm so lost i have no idea what's going on like basically like folding like calling it a day like throwing in the towel and for me i actually love to see that because my thing in terms of just like my trading and just like you know my life is i just have like this never say die attitude like for me like even when i used to play tennis you know, my whole tennis game was literally just, I always played against people that were better than me. I started playing tennis when I was like 14. So I was like super late into it. Um, but yeah, my whole thing was just get the ball back and people would run me around the tennis court. They were better than me. They hit the ball harder than me. And my thing was just chase the ball, get the ball back over the net, get it over the net, get it over the net. 
and that was that's really just like my you know my mentality for everything so in terms of this like long drawn out trading environment this is really favorable you know for my personality type which is just always in that mindset of you know reset keep going you know maintain your composure that's something i say a lot like you just have to maintain your composure you have to stay centered whether it's like your portfolio is having like a really good day or even if it's having a not good day you want to stay centered you don't want to be like you know if the market drops 30 basis points since the end of the day you're like you know you're pulling your hair out or like you know whatever it's just you really have to stay even keel if you feel like you're pulling your hair out and then make some adjustments make the adjustments and then you're gonna feel so much better and then you won't be pulling your hair out anymore but if you're just kind of like pulling your hair out and then every day you find yourself getting like mentally weaker and weaker and you're just like i don't even know what's going on anymore the market's up i think it's gonna go back down like you know you just don't even know it means you got to make some sort of change maybe get some time away from the screen get up from the screens um and just make some adjustments but yeah this is i think a good environment if you have a lot of resilience so yeah that is the vix let's take a look at the russell russell today had had a nice sequence and talked about this earlier but we've been stuck in this like six day range for the russell yesterday it looked like oh my gosh the bottom just fell out like we're done and then today was the top performer we tested above this six day range we actually closed inside of it what i really liked about this was i'm going to pull up my market profile setup over here and let me let me go to the iwm for this uh let's see so iwm what i love is that take a look at this our daily point of control migrated higher and our daily point of control was above the point of control for any of the prior days in this six day consolidation period. So that means that investors as a whole were more willing to pay up for the small caps than they've been at any point during this little six day sequence. So yeah, it would have been nice if we closed, you know, right on the highs, but I feel pretty comfortable with this action that I'm seeing. Now let's take a look. Uh, we'll check out real quick the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has not even reclaimed the 20 day simple moving average yet. So I, I knew that just because the Russell, uh, the NASDAQ had two really good days, I knew people would definitely chase this one, but it's just the furthest behind in terms of the technicals. So we have that one. Dow Jones was a really solid performer today. And the Dow Jones, you know, looks better than almost all the other indices so look at this we're above the 20 day moving average decisively we're above the point of control decisively and we tested the 50 day moving average so not too shabby for the dow jones let's take a look we're gonna pull up our sectors just so we can see you know where is the money actually going in the market because another reason why i see a lot of uh traders and investors really just like effed up in the head is because they're just trying to go back to the growth stocks even though we're in a different macro environment like we are in pretty much like a rising rate environment it's just not going to favor those same stocks so if we look at where the money's flowing at these momentum groups we have energy at the top of our list that's been a great group to be in over the past month we have regional banks which were positive today and they've been a great spot to be in and then we have blockchain assets over here and I would even include the next two aerospace and defense had a really nice performance and just the regular financials. You know, these regional banks, they're a subset of the XLF. So if you're concentrated more so in these areas, which, you know, I am personally, you're not like uh, running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Like you're not like, why is the growth not going up? Because the growth is actually losing a little bit of momentum. You know, growth stocks were killing it for the past, you know, six or seven months. Uh, but now they're just this environment's not really the best for them. And now let's take a look at some other standouts. Kweb, Kweb was up 7.12 percent. This is another reason why I don't think it's the end of the world for the market. So one of the major reasons why the market was in a downtrend. Oh my gosh, China's blowing up Evergrande. 
what's going on with Evergrande? You know, the world's going to end. They're going to blow up. Contagion risk, like all of that. And so far, we're just not really seeing that. So K-Web, uh, you know, life went on. And then we also got a good headline today saying that, you know, officials from China and the United States met and they had a constructive, you know, conversation, constructive meeting. So all those like decoupling, oh my gosh, these ADRs are going to go poof, they're going to vanish. Incrementally, that's a bullish headline for that. So I actually traded uh, PDD today. Let me pull this one up. Yeah, closed up 6.3%. So, you know, not too shabby. Now let's take a look here. Yeah, so pin duo duo, what I like about this one, then let me just pull this trade up. And this was actually the first trade that I did in the morning. I saw that we had strength in the pre-market in this group. So I entered the PDD October 15th, 95 calls. And I saw these market makers, they're pricing in, you know, decent upside for the Chinese names. So the Chinese names, they've disappointed investors, you know, time and time again. But at some point, these names are going to have their time in the sun. And we actually closed about the 50 day moving average for this one, pretty much right on that 20 day. And we're knocking on the door of this monthly value area. So I got into these calls. So far, they are doing pretty well. Uh, what else did I do? I closed out. A third of my spy October 15th 434 calls I put these on yesterday uh, sized up on these a little bit and closed these out for a nice winner closed them out for 829 I'd paid 503 I still have you know two-thirds disposition on I was like you know what I'm gonna at least take a target and then I added a booking 2550 by 2580 call spread so again you know I'm not really looking for what's the next high-flying growth stock you know, there's definitely still a market for those names don't get me wrong but i'm trying to focus on these areas that are really trying to break out to new all-time highs so booking yeah, you know, this one uh is trading right up to this pivot you know it's not like it closed on the highs there was definitely some you know profit taking in this name but this name has been a great performer while the market has been in its malaise so do i think booking could get up here by november yeah, so I put on a call spread. So yeah, liking this name uh, for the moment. So we'll see what happens. And then let's take a look. So we had those. Let's take a look at our style factors. Style factors, high beta was up 1.1% and cyclicals were up 1.34%. So yeah, it's just showing, you know, that rotation's continuing. And we've been seeing this rotation for the past five weeks. A lot of people out there, they're still not really seeing it, which, you know, it is what it is. I mean, look at the monthly performance for high beta. It's only down 0.2%, whereas, you know, quality, international momentum, you know, a lot of these other areas, they're down way more. So that's rotation. But for most players in this game, they only realize it, you know, after it's already ripped uh, to the highs, basically, or like just completely ripped to the point where even like journalists are talking about it, that sort of thing. Um, and then the areas that were really weak, we had defensives that were very weak. They were only up 0.67%. High div, low vol was only up 0.35%. So this is very risk on action that we're seeing where those are lagging. So yeah, it's kind of tough for me to be like, oh yeah, I'm so bearish right now. Like we're just reclaiming all these technical levels. You know, major catalysts that we thought could move us to the downside are being avoided. You know, market participants are rotating to risk on areas of the market like I'm bearish here. Like I just doesn't make any sense to me, really. You know, things could change. This jobs report could definitely be a curveball. Um, but I can see these investors, they're hedging it. So this was another thing that was super funny. So, you know, you can see we had strength across the board here. We didn't close on the highs, but still strength. This uh, CBOE put to call ratio. Yo, oh my gosh yeah these investors look at this so in the morning they were like decently risk on this thing was at like a 0.8 and in the morning i was actually surprised i thought it was gonna be way lower given just how much the market was running throughout the day they started buying more and more hedges and we almost got to an over one on this put to call ratio so i get it that there's risks out there but it's just investors Right now they're just like addicted to hedging addicted to hedging um so i just don't really see like 
if everyone else is hedging and they're all super fearful and the price action's getting better, I love that setup. So we're gonna have to see. Yeah, CNN Fear and Greed Index is at a 34. So I don't know. I definitely like this setup heading into the jobs report. Um, I think the key decision point for that jobs report is does the number come out really strong? If it comes out really strong, then I could see, you know, continued moves into these style factors like high beta, cyclicals, etc. If it comes out super weak, then we might see money flow into minval, growth. You know those sorts of areas so that to me is really what i'm looking for with the jobs report and then again the seasonality you know we're in october i will say at this point we're probably about a fourth of the way through in terms of the trading month so i mean look at where we are for the seasonality so i mean am i really going to be bearish like into the best seasonality like back in august you know there weren't really many like bearish investors i don't think it was kind of like you know we're making new highs like this is great but we were heading into some of the worst seasonality you know, september is really volatile and even you know the beginning of october as well which we've been experiencing it's people like the sentiment really wasn't bearish heading into that awful seasonality and then the market did awful now we're heading into the really bullish seasonality and everyone's thinking about what just happened instead of really looking ahead so that's kind of what I'm seeing. And, you know, I want to be positioned bullish ahead of this really good seasonality. And then let's take a quick look. We're going to check out our Big Tech Options Races team. Let's see, Big Tech. Dun, dun, dun. Open the web app. All right, let's check it out. Let's see what they were buying puts on. Options races, today's combined flows. Let's check it out. Yeah, Spy, Tesla, of course, in the lead. Alibaba is one of the top names, team. So that's standing out. We have AMD, a lot of the usual suspects. Let's take a look at the Alibaba flow. Look at our trade ski, Alibaba. And definitely a mixed bag so even though you know alibaba look at this one it was up really nice nice amount today yeah it was up 8.26 percent closed above the 20 day and this is another you know really interesting thing with alibaba so we've had retests of the 20 day moving average all of them have been complete duds and you'll see we can kind of get over it and then we just fall right back under this is a really nice candle, like a really decisive move above the 20 day. So yeah, to me, these names, you know, they look solid. Alibaba, I just added that one into the long term portfolio, maybe about a week or so ago on the last rebalance. Alibaba looking good, sentiment still pretty mixed on it. And then let's take a look as well. I saw a lot of flow for a firm, so that's definitely something I'm noting. A firm I am long in the long-term portfolio as well. Let's take a look. Ooh, we got some Disney flow. I'm long Disney as well. Yeah, Disney also pretty mixed. We got some puts coming in for November, puts coming in for October, and then we have some November calls. Hmm. Yeah, more October calls. Oh, this is odd. Yeah, pretty balanced for Disney. Now let's see, we got Square, Snapchat, GM. Okay, so let's check out Affirm, look at this. Flow going out, it's still like really short term. Oh, we got some 2022 orders for the 90 strike. Yeah, November orders. A lot of these are very short term. Huh. Wow, this one's December of 2022. Let's take a look at Affirm. This one I'm also long in the long-term portfolio. I don't have any exposure in the trading account. Yeah, firm looks great. You know, we had that nice move yesterday. And now, you know, we even closed positive today. So looking pretty solid. And then NEO, we saw a fair amount of flow as well. NEO. This is more mixed to bullish flow. Let's take a look at the NEO chart. Yeah, this one also closed above the 20-day simple moving average. So that about does it for 
our Vig Tech options flow, and that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all have an awesome evening and an awesome trading day tomorrow. I'll see you all next time.